Hey guys, Bobby Hughes here with Heritage Pride Custom Firearms on the Heritage Pride Homestead. Back with uh, another vlog for the hydroponic rail system build video series. And uh, in today's video, we're going to go ahead and transplant um, some of our strawberries into our rail system. Now at this point, we've gotten everything done. Um, we've gotten uh, the uh, rails made, the table made. The plumbing in, the tank is in, the water's running through it right now as we speak. And if you missed any of those, then you can go ahead and uh, check up here with the suggested videos. Go back and rewatch that playlist and get up to speed on where we're at right now. But in today's video, what we're going to be doing is actually planting our strawberries in the system. Now you can see right behind me here. Um, I've got a couple of grow trays where I started some strawberries. Now I got mine uh, from Gurney's. I want to say I got them from Gurney's. And um, I, they were just the dormant root system. And I went ahead and put them in these trays with some potting soil or garden soil. Some compost mix, I think it was actually. Um, and got let it, went ahead and, and got them going. Now I also have another bag. Uh, and some of them did really good, some of them didn't do so hot. Um, I'll show you guys in a minute, but but um, these guys back here uh, are doing pretty good. We've already had a couple of blooms on them. I went ahead and chopped those off uh, just so that the, the plant wouldn't use its nutrients and, and its, uh, its power, uh, all of its strength, to produce a couple of little puny strawberries. I cut those off so that the, that, that strength goes back into the plant to make the plant bigger and healthier. Then I've got some others over here you can't see. Some of them started out okay, and the other ones uh, not so much. So, and there's about two weeks difference in the planting times in those. So, um, they should be further along than that if they were going to do any good. Now, also I have some crowns inside that I just ordered um, that are still root dormant root systems, and I'm going to try both. I'm going to plant them this way right into the rail system. And then I'm also going to use some of those new crowns that I've got and put those uh, directly into the rail system as well and see how that works out without starting them in the soil first. So it's all a big experiment for me. This is my first time doing it. And I'm just bringing you guys along to uh, follow the progress. All right, so first things first. Uh, I've got my grow medium uh, soaking in some water. Try and get some of that dust and uh, dust and, and just you can if I push that back here you can see kind of how dirty that water is. Uh, try and get some of that dust and stuff off of there to keep from uh, making our, our grow water dirty. Uh, there's no filter in place on our grow system. So we want to try to get some of that rinsed off of there so that it doesn't go directly into our grow tank or into our uh, sump tank. And the media that I'm using is called hydro corn. Uh, it's a hydroponic substrate, um, and uh, it's a little bit more expensive than hydrogen. Uh, um, and but I got a, a better deal on the shipping on this batch, so I bought a couple of bags of it, and then I've also got some actual hydrogen that I'm going to be using in the aquaponic system, along with the hydro corn and I'm also going to experiment with some lava rock in the hydropon or in the aquaponic system. Um, but for the rail system, I've got the hydro corn. We're going to go ahead and use it. I don't know if anybody's had any experience with it, but uh, feel free to leave your comments about it in the uh, in the comments below. For me, in the first time doing this, this stuff is super light. I expected it to be heavy, but it's not. It's like it feels almost like I'm handling styrofoam that's been dipped in um, chocolate or something. I don't know how to explain it, but it's super lightweight. Um, so anyway, I've got that. I've got another bucket over here with some rainwater in it. That's what we're going to use to wash our plants off before we put them into the uh, rail system. So uh, first things first, we're also going to need our net cups which are right over here. And for the system that we have built, we need three three inch net cups. So we're using three inch net cups. 
and basically what we're going to do is just take and get us a little bit of our hydro corn and uh, put in the bottom of it we're going to soak our uh, our strawberries in some water try to wash the dirt off the roots the best we can keep that out of our system and uh, then we'll fill in the rest with the top with the hydro corn so that's the plan and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these strawberries in some water and then we'll get started planting them. Alright guys, so here's some of our strawberries I've had growing in this uh, potting mix uh, for about uh, probably about eight weeks now, six, six to eight weeks I'd say. So some of them are doing pretty good. We've had a couple of little blooms right there. There's one with a bloom already on it, strawberry bloom. We're just going to go ahead and pull that off. Um, make sure that uh, it's getting all the nutrients it needs and basically I'm just taking my hand and going down in here getting down under the roots and kind of loosening up this potting soil try to keep from breaking our root system here and uh, some of the bigger ones have already developed some pretty big roots so and then I'm just taking and pulling it out kind of knocking some of the dirt off here And then they're going straight into the uh, bucket of water over here where we're washing them off. So just uh, trying to be e easy with it. Basically, from what I know, or at least what I think I know, these dark roots are last year's or last growing season's root system. And that's how they kind of come from gurneys when you get them. You get a little crown, and then you get the old dark roots in there. And then the light, lighter color ones are the new root, uh, new root growth from this year since they've been in the dirt here. So we definitely don't want to damage the new root growth. So you see how that just kind of came up like a little ball? I'm just trying to knock off as much of that dirt as we can without damaging the roots and then uh, it's going right into the water alright so now what we're going to do is go ahead and grab one of our plants out of the water here. I'm going to try to pick off some of this old uh, old growth leaves and stuff. And we're just trying to wash as much of that out of there as we can. Get as much as of the potting soil rinsed out of there as we can to where we have a nice clean root system. And we're going to take one of our net cups and we're just going to put push that. Realistically this is a lot of root to go in this net cup. We're just going to kind of push it down in there, take our hydro, uh, our hydro corn, just put it right around like that, and that one's ready to go into the rail. So we'll just continue this process. I'll go ahead and knock out all these that I just threw in the bucket here. And uh, then I'll take you over to the rail and uh, put them in. I've got these little um, stakes here for um, for dripper irrigation in your regular garden. And because these tubes are so stiff, I uh, wasn't having any luck just kind of laying them on it. So I'm using these stakes to kind of hold them in place. So like. This one right here is really long. Um, so, what I'm going to do is go ahead and set this one down in there. Go ahead and put my stake on here. Like that. I'm going to go ahead and clip this bad boy where I want it use my snips go ahead and snip it off right there now 
can take one of these little keepers, put it on here, and that'll pinch that tube and keep it from backing off if the pressure changes at all. And we'll just do the uh, same thing with the next one here. Okay, so all of my strawberry starts are in the system now. Um, all of the ones, obviously, that are green were doing really good. Uh, this is just kind of an experiment. I found this little guy. Um, he was floating around in the bucket. So I think he probably came off of uh, one of the other ones but he had a little bit of a root on him so I thought I would stick him in here and give it a shot and see what happens with that and then these two are also experiments these came out of my starts here out of all the ones I started these nine nothing ever sprouted and these two were an additional two so I had eleven that didn't sprout um, and so I'm going to put two of them in the net cup directly uh, and see if they start, see if they get started or whatever. But um, it's just an experiment to see what happens. I went ahead and swapped out my pump. Um, just out of curiosity, I wanted to see... Um, you know kind of if it would make a difference I thought maybe because the way the plumbing is it comes up and tees right there and then back feeds to that one I thought maybe that was why that it was you know something with the current or the flow was why that one wasn't pumping good um, but I noticed that this one was doing the same thing it was just dripping and then if you took the tube and turned it up on its end like that uh, it wouldn't run out at all it was like there wasn't enough pressure to push it at all so I took the pump this one here I took it out and I had it you can see I had it wide open I took it out and uh, yeah it says output 1500 liters per hour height max 1.8 meters so that's just under six feet, 1.8 meters is just under six feet, or right at six feet. So I'm not real sure why that one wasn't doing the job, but it wasn't doing the job. So broke out one of this uh, Jabo, Jeb, Jabeo pump. It's a, like I said, I showed you earlier, it's a DC pump, Marina Aqua. Um, this is the DC 1200. And the 1200 is supposed to have a max height of 1.5 meters um, with 1200 liter an hour output. So, you know, of course, at 1.5 meters, you're going to have a lot less out output. You know, a uh, perfect scenario or perfect world, if it was an uh, even pump, you know, just flat ground, um, then you'll get 1200 liters an hour. But at 1.5 meters of head, um, I'm guessing you would get zero at 1.5 max. You would get zero liters an hour. So I would say our head height is probably uh, three feet from the bottom of the pump to right there. And then even though it's a straight pump, you've got to think... Uh, or straight across you got to think it's still got to have the power to push it and then each standpipe is 12 inches so that adds another foot of head to it so theoretically best case scenario we've got four foot ahead um, best case scenario if you're going down we're probably maxing out that little pump down there at the end but it seems to be flowing okay down there you can see it flowing so so far this one looks pretty good 
Now the cool thing about this little pump, look how small it is, it's tiny. It's got this little lead here, that comes out, and it's got a little pump controller that comes with it. So instead of reaching down in there, you can just turn the pump controller down and uh, adjust the flow rate on it. So like, I just turned it down to, uh, just turned it down just a little bit, and you can see it's not even flowing now. So it's not enough to get it going. So I'm running it wide open, and it's doing, you know, doing okay there. Um, so just food for thought when you're selecting your pump, make sure that you get something, you, you do your research on what size pump. So you very well may need a bigger pump to be able to pump that much head if you've got a lot of head, you know, a lot of lift. So you might need a bigger pump. Now another thing this has, it's got a 15 minute feed or 10 minute feed. So you can hit the feed button and the water will shut down for 10 minutes. Um, and it's mainly for like your fish. Um, so if you're using it to power a Venturi uh, or something like that, you can hit the feed button, feed your fish, and then uh, in 10 minutes, you don't have to worry about turning it back on. In 10 minutes, it'll automatically come back on. Your Venturi will start back up. So you'll have oxygen in your tank. So anyway, we're going to give this little pump a shot. We're going to we're gonna leave it going. It looks like it was probably made in China or Japan too because it's got uh, Chinese writing on it. So we'll give it a shot, see how it does. These pumps did cost a little bit more, these DC pumps. Um, I think this one here was about 40 bucks. So it cost a little bit more. And I've got a bigger one over there that is a, uh, let's see, it's a 9,000, DC 9,000. Um, and that one actually costs about 80 bucks, I think. So a little bit more expensive, but they're DC, so they automatically pull less wattage than a uh, regular pump. The DC uh, pumps convert uh, AC to DC, and they're less wattage. And um, so that'll save you a little bit of electricity. And then with the DC pump, if you restrict the flow, like let's say uh, you got too much flow for what you're doing, you can restrict it and it doesn't uh, burn the pump up. That's why you have a little pump controller on here. So um, anyway, just uh, information for you. So the plants are in and uh, we will be back. I'm going to run them, I think, for probably about 24 hours or so on just this natural rainwater. Um, and then we will add in the uh, nutrients and do some pH testing and see how our water looks, our pH levels look on the water. So we'll do that um, probably tomorrow and see how that works out. And then I'll continue the vlog anytime I am doing an update, see how the growth progress is going um, and uh, also adding more plants to it. Um, I've got a whole package of crowns that came uh, in the mail and I need to probably get them in some dirt at least so that they're not setting just in the package. Um, but I'm kind of tempted to go ahead and put them in these front rails here, at least some of them. I think there's like 24 of them or something in a package. So at least maybe I'll do these uh, 18 um, right in the rail and then put the other ones in some dirt and uh, see it, how they do. See time-wise, uh, on the timeline, how fast they sprout here as opposed to in the dirt. So that might be a cool thing. Okay guys, so that's pretty much it for uh, this episode of the Hydroponics Rail System Build Vlog Series. Um, covered quite a bit today. Uh, I didn't really go into a lot of detail about stuff but I uh, tried to show kind of the process of everything um, as always if you have any questions uh, about the progress or about the process uh, in which we do this just go ahead and, and pop that in the comments below um, if you have any uh, any suggestions because I'm open for suggestions for sure I said this is my first system and uh, first time experimenting with hydroponics. 
uh, and just wanted to bring you guys along with me. So if you have any suggestions, if you've done this before, um, I am totally uh, open for input. One thing I, um, I know I'm going to need to do is get a bigger pump. Uh, we're maxing that little pump out doing what we're doing right here, running all the drippers. So I will be getting another pump, I think. I'm going to start looking for maybe a medium size um, pump. Um, don't forget to, if you haven't seen it, check out the uh, suggested videos, uh, the, the rest of the, uh, the series get you up to where we're at right now and don't forget to uh, go ahead and subscribe uh, in the little link there um, until next time get out there shoot some guns be safe and most importantly have fun see you guys later